and welcome back. Bioware, one of the largest yet, I would say, most troubled studios, has seen two key and very notable staff leave, including the general manager. And this gives us an opportunity to basically dive into what's actually going on with their projects, who these departures are, why they matter, who the replacements are, and generally what the future is going to look like for Bioware, and of course, their parent company, EA. Two extremely important and experienced staff have chosen to leave Bioware. Those people are Casey Hudson and Mark Dara. Now here's the thing, if you know Bioware, then you know that, uh, well, that's two pretty damn important names. We'll cover their stories a bit more fully later in this video. The two of them made blog posts, and in response to that, Laura Mille, EA's chief studios officer, also made a blog post. The three of them pretty much came out at the same time. It was a very coordinated thing. Now, Laura herself is an interesting figure, having seemingly seen how Respawn at make games and then basically double down on Respawn's way of doing things being a good idea. That's at least based on her interviews and talking about applying the lessons of Respawn to the rest of the company. Certainly something that is sorely needed for Bioware. And perhaps these successes are why her combined compensation is uh, now a creamy $16 million for 2020. And that's over double what she got in 2019, so clearly the C-suite are pretty darn happy with her performance. Now, both Casey and Mark's leaving posts are the usual that you would expect, right? They are recapping their time at Bioware, the great memories they have. They mention, you know, that they are leaving, that they're leaving the company, of course, um, but that their respective projects are in great hands. Um, Mark simply said that he had chosen to retire from Bioware, and then Casey said that he wants to, as he puts it, rediscover his creative passion through personal work. Now, you could see that, right? And you could say, oh, Bioware killed his passion. He needs to rediscover it. But you've got to remember, Casey Hudson was the general manager of the company. Yeah, like, look, if you want to get into your creative zone all the time, that's not going to happen if you're a studio general manager. A GM is doing a lot more stuff. Um, now, all that said, veteran staff leaving AAA studios for more personally fulfilling work. I mean, come on, that's a trend these days. We've seen it with a bunch of Blizz people as well. So I think some degree of reading into these posts is probably reasonable enough from us. I think as well, especially given the extremely troubled decade that Bioware have had. I mean, it really has been a bit ridiculous from such a previously well-regarded studio. And this is definitely something that will have been a... Uh, delicate PR situation for EA. And that's where we, of course, have to go on to Laura Mele's post. Basically, she thanks them for their work, as all posts like that would, and then she gets down to business, um, praising the studio's current team and outlining the replacements. So... Well, replacements and continuations, because Samantha Ryan, who used to lead WB Games, continues to oversee Bioware, and then Christian Daly, an ex-Blizzard employee, is actually going to be overseeing their current uh, Dragon Age project. Now, he is a particularly interesting guy, because he seems to be leading Anthem 2.0, so he's clearly been shuffled over to Dragon Age 4, which uh, I think would be the more important project for them overall. Now, Mark Darrett did point out that the creative director of that project, Matthew Goldman still does remain, so at least that is a good thing for stability. Now, as for the replacement of Casey Hudson, right, the new general manager of Bioware, that's a pretty damn big role, we don't know yet. So, clearly, they just have not had one in place for, um, you know, like, in time for Casey actually leaving, but uh, Laura did say they were interviewing people. I mean, yeah, come on, obviously they would be. Now, as for Mass Effect, which is the one that I generally care about a bit more, well, it is still being led by Mike Gamble, who was a producer on Mass Effect 2, 3, Andromeda, and Anthem. So, a strong start, maybe not as good of a finish, so let's just hope the lessons in those latter two games were actually learnt. Uh, from what we understand, though, he has been leading a new Mass Effect project, like a new full Mass Effect game, since 2019. So, that's the core situation here. Mass Effect stuff really is not changing. Dragon Age 4 has got a new executive producer. Anthem has had a bit of a reshuffle because of that. And then Bioware will have a new general manager at some point in the future. Alright, I hope you're having fun so far. Okay, it's a new month, and that means it's new Patreon gear. So, 
for December, we're getting frosty, it is Death Knight month. So that means you will get our Death Knight class pin uh, in the mail. This is a pre-production pick before it has been plated. So actually it's going to be a silver color. And I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of how the sausage is made. So you'll get this and of course the lovely serene elf art and sticker as well. Then also this month we are making large behind the scenes changes, especially to, um, well, how we run overall and uh, this channel too. And uh, I'll be documenting more of that over on Patreon. On. You'll, of course, also be getting the Daily Briefing, which is our basically catch-all gaming news uh, letter every single day. Makes it really easy for you. And then also, yeah, we're doing that partial revamp of how we run this channel, and therefore, we do expect quite a bit more in the way of early content. So, all exciting stuff. A big thank you for the support, and with that said, let's now learn about Bioware's departures. Casey Hudson worked there for 20 years, and in that time he was the game director on Knights of the Old Republic and the Mass Effect trilogy. Now what's interesting is that he actually ended up leaving the company in 2014, reportedly to work on other projects. Now that led to Casey signing on as a creative director with Microsoft, but seemingly nothing really came of that and he ended up actually rejoining Bioware in 2017 as their general manager. Uh, essentially the, I'd say the, the top dog at like the non-super corporate level. Um, so yeah, that's what he was doing. And really, it's hard to overestimate Casey's impact on the company. I mean, he was in a great part responsible for Mass Effect, as an example. There are also, though, less great things. I mean, the Mass Effect 3 ending does come to mind. That apparently, I mean, very questionable creative decisions, but that was apparently the result of him disappearing off decently late in the day with another guy to um, basically just crunch it out. Um, that's something he took a lot of flack for, but... To be fair to him, I also think we have to take that in the context of uh, EA forcing Bioware to crunch Mass Effect 3 out in 18 months. Yeah. Imagine doing the end of a legendary trilogy, highly critically acclaimed, and forcing them to uh, do it quick. Yep, that's some of the incredible decision making from the EA of the early 2010s. Really, that anything decent came of the Mass Effect 3 project is uh, pretty damn astounding. That said, that's also a similar EA to the one that I think uh, gave them 14 months to get uh, Dragon Age 2. Not really ideal. Now, speaking of Dragon Age, well, Mark Dara was the executive producer of Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age Inquisition, and uh, DA2, I believe as well. And he was both the executive producer and game director of Dragon Age 4. Uh, of course, Dragon Age 4 is the one that hasn't came out yet, so that is a little bit rough because that is a very much in-development project, and as you'll see, one that has had its share of trouble. Now, the main takeaway here is that these two guys were pretty damn important leadership figures at Bioware, and really, from what we understand, they haven't announced uh, where they're going. I'll certainly say it is very curious that both individuals chose to leave the company at the same time. And there's obviously a bit of me that's wondering, you know, will we see a new studio form once their uh, non-competes expire? Maybe, but that is just speculation. Uh, you'll certainly see, though, how their jobs would have been pretty tricky. I mean, Dragon Age 4 had one internal reboot at the very least. Maybe it's currently struggling. It's kind of hard to say. Uh, really, Bioware have played their cards pretty close to their chest with that game. We just don't know that much. And then fundamentally, I'd say, if you're a creative type, then yeah, being the general manager of a studio, yeah, that might not be that satisfying. Okay, with all of that said, we now know a bit more about these two guys. What does this actually mean for the games that we care about? Dragon Age 4 has had at least one internal reboot. We really barely know anything about the current version of the game, though there has been talk of the game having live game elements, which certainly did have people spooked, especially in light of the state of Anthem, but we still don't really know what that's actually going to look like. Dragon Age 4, though, will probably still be Bioware's next big mainline release, um, and even if it did have um, another reboot, I mean, I think it's almost certainly further ahead than their Mass Effect project, which was only started in 2019. That said, if Dara leaving was actually indicative of another reboot, I mean, man, that would be a disaster, but I don't really think that's, I don't know, I just think that's kind of unlikely. I suppose if it has happened, it'll probably be leaked to the press. Now, for some history, Dragon Age 4 version 1 was codenamed Joplin, and uh, it kind of struggled because 
while well, uh, cool, some of the Dragon Age uh, team, well, you know, after Inquisition, some of them went over to Mass Effect Andromeda, um, but that was only for, in 2016, Joplin actually to be put on hold to basically allow its team to all help to ship Mass Effect Andromeda, a game that obviously had an extremely troubled development cycle. Now, after Mass Effect Andromeda shipped, people then went back to work in Joplin, only for it then to seem like Anthem was an impending disaster, Casey Hudson to rejoin the company, and then, well, the higher-ups to axe Joplin, in order of basically moving that team over to Anthem, including Mark Dara, who, um, of course, is one of the guys who, today, we've learned, has left the company. And that's all because Anthem was just a game that had a massive development cycle that was a big mess, it wasn't really going anywhere fast, and they essentially needed to crunch out a releasable version of that game in pretty damn short order. Now, after this happened, a small team started a new Dragon Age project called Morrison, which was planned to have live service elements. Now, this is uh, a reboot, right? Um, and of course, that meant that Joplin was no longer a thing. And this actually led to the creative director, Mike Laidlaw, a big Bioware veteran, uh, to leave the company. And I think he then had a not that successful stint at Ubisoft, but now he is a part of an early, uh, basically the early team of a new studio. So there could be exciting stuff there. But anyway... This new version of Dragon Age was uh, in Mark Dyer's hands, and we can presume that it is still the one that is being worked on, of course, also still under the same creative director. I'll say one thing, though. Um, Mark and Dragon Age sure did have a busy and probably not super fulfilling time. I mean, you've got Joplin, Joplin being messed around because of Andromeda and also because of Anthem, uh, and then for Joplin to be cancelled and then for there to be a reboot... I mean, that is just a lot of tossing and turning on um, on Dragon Age, which, if you're a big Dragon Age fan, is certainly pretty sad, because by the time the Dragon Age Inquisition DLC started to roll out, it really seemed like they were beginning to find their groove. Next, Mass Effect, where really all we know is that the trilogy remaster is on the way, and that Mike Gamble um, and company kicked off a new Mass Effect project in 2019. That's one that was made official via an N7 Day teaser a few weeks ago, where we did get to see some decent snazzy art. It's basically impossible to know where this is going to go though, right? I mean, it's just so damn early. But surely, I'll say this, surely they know why Mass Effect Andromeda went so terribly wrong. And assuming there are no internal reboots, and that this is maybe a project that has been, you know, started off with not that much in terms of, you know, the shackles of the past holding it down, and perhaps in light of Laura Mille and Vince Zampella running around the place at EA trying to, uh, you know, sort of bring the lessons of Respawn to the other studios, if that is the case, then surely it's going to be off to a better start than some of the other more recent, uh, you know, sort of failures from Bioware. Now, in terms of the project kickoff times, well, because that's only in 2019, I think we can expect Dragon Age 4 and then the next Mass Effect, in terms of the super big new releases. What then about Anthem, which is, of course, perhaps Bioware's greatest failure? Well, from what we understand, Anthem 2.0 is very much still being worked on, but it will be under perhaps some new leadership given the staff reshuffling. We really don't know much of what they've got planned for the game other than, well, what's been covered in their, I'd say, sparse and, when they do appear, rather short blog posts. They do seem to have the right idea, though. I will say that. I mean, every post that they've posted has been something that I've agreed with, because it's basically been saying, better javelin gameplay, better loot systems. But overall, it's impossible to basically say where that's going to be going without seeing a more comprehensive vision, and we just don't have that yet. I will say, I cannot see this one being ready until late 2021 at the earliest, I have nothing to back that up, bar just my firm belief that this game needs an absolutely extreme, titanic rework to have any hope in the market. Because, even with that, I mean, are people just going to be sick of loot shooters? Loot games? I kind of think so, right? Or at least, whatever the vibe of Anthem was, I don't think that a decent version of that is going to fly in today's market. I think they're going to need to really innovate off the good parts that were in the base of Anthem, and I think it needs to fundamentally be a different game. And I'm not really sure if they're going to be able to do that. Is this good or bad, right? Is this a disaster? Is this really heralding the end of Bioware, another studio for EA's graveyard? That's dramatic, and basically I'll say it's impossible to say if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'll say the gut feeling is that it's bad, right? 
I mean, two key figures leaving at the same time, prompting a very PR-friendly response from the parent company studio head? Yeah. That obviously does not look great, especially when it's then taken in context. Dragon Age Inquisition, their one win as of late, was an absolute bloody miracle when you look at its development and what's been said about it. And really since then, every Bioware release has been scuffed, bar its DLC, right? Andromeda, big fail. Anthem, big fail. Yeah, th this company's not had a good recent history. Bioware just does not look good when placed next to Respawn, but that said, it also did take Respawn a long time to start being super successful. Titanfall 1 didn't go the distance. It had great, a great base, but it didn't go the distance. Titanfall 2 was obviously incredible, but it just did not sell that well. Apex Legends and Fallen Order are really what started to kick off Respawn being the kind of, you know, golden goose or whatever of EA. So I think it's clear that EA know, or at least with Respawn knew, that there was great talent there and that they would eventually find success. And they did. With Bioware, I think there could be very strong talent. I mean, there almost certainly is, but I think a lot of it will have left the company given the really rough period of time that they've had. One thing they do have, though, is great IP. And I think that means that if those projects can have the time and the funding that they need, and if they're actually kicked off in a reasonable way, and those lessons of how Respawn make games are actually applied, then they can come out good. It all just comes down to if Bioware can overcome what has damaged it. And as for what that is, well, it's actually pretty simple. One thing, the Frostbite engine. Just not a great engine for what Bioware have been making. We've heard that from many different staff speaking to the press, yet... Bioware were forced to use Frostbite. This caused untold havoc on Dragon Age Inquisition, Mass Effect Andromeda, and Anthem. Meanwhile, Respawn got to build their games on, uh, well, mostly a modified Source engine, and then more recently, Unreal Engine. Now, sure, Bioware have said that they're going to be working off their Anthem set of Frostbite tools for future projects, but one still has to wonder if that's a square peg, round hole situation, and if going for an off-the-shelf solution like Unreal would just be the better option. I mean, EA, I get it, you probably don't want to pay the licensing royalties to Epic Games, but man, a few percentage off the top is uh, a lot better than, well, saddling your teams with sets of tools and engines that just don't really work for what they want to make, and, you know, results in development hell that's plagued a whole bunch of the recent projects. Another thing, then, is scope and production. This is when it's not EA's fault, really, at all, it would seem. Mass Effect Andromeda seems to have had plenty of time and obviously was a big fail. And when you actually read into that, it seems like a lot of that was just way over-scoping at the start. Anthem is another game that had years of concepting and development and pre-production and technical tests, but wasn't really shaped until an actual video game until surprisingly late in the process. I mean, just look into Kotaku's investigations into each of those projects. They are really quite wild stories. So if Bioware can overcome their technological problems, their reliance on Bioware magic crunch, and perhaps keep their scope and their focus reasonable, then yes, they can pull it back. These things can be super successful. But I'll say this, if the next Mass Effect and Dragon Age go down as well as their last two releases, which are of course Andromeda and Anthem, I don't know. I think that's the end of really Bioware's good name, and that would be a very sad thing to see. With all that's been said, let's take this in the wider context of EA games. EA is doing pretty damn great in sports, as much as loot box controversies do exist, but they're doing mixed in core games. Bioware has been serially underperforming for basically a decade. DICE clearly underperformed with Battlefield 5. I mean, we've done a whole thing in that. But Respawn have came in to save the day, right? With Star Wars, with Apex Legends, and seemingly EA Motive have done a nice little job with Star Wars Squadrons. Right now, Mike Zampella is off helping DICE LA move up from just being a support studio. Or at least that was the last big thing we heard, and that was um, in an interview with Laura Mele herself. So, good things could be happening for DICE LA. Then Bioware has a bunch of pending projects with incredible IP, so that could turn out well. And Respawn is probably primed to continue pumping out more great content. I mean, certainly we know there's another um, Fallen Order game in the works. 
So if those Bioware projects go well and Respawn continue to be Respawn, then that would be an incredible period of time for EA. And then if DICE LA can get their own projects on the go and EA Motive can you know, continue to do great things, then we could be looking at an EA that has a core lineup for the 2020s that looks a lot better than its lineup for the 2010s. But as rosy as a picture that that is, well, they did do the 2010s the way they did. And if they do that again, and if these games come out and you know are just seven out of tens, you know, and don't really set the world on fire, yeah, then that is permanent damage to the Dragon Age name and to the Mass Effect name. And IP means a hell of a lot. Uh, that's the main, that's the big asset for EA. And uh, if those things go, then what else is Bioware? I mean, at that stage, are they better off being a support studio? It's hard to say. I certainly wish them the best. I really like their IP, and I really liked their games in the past. What's happened recently cannot continue, though. So, that is it for me. Let me know what you think is going on, and if you think this uh, is 100% bad news, or if there could be some form of silver lining. That's it for me, though. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.